It's YouTube Wednesday. So great stuff is kind of a haunting staple. Lots of home haunters use it. Uh, even pro haunts use it. Uh, often it's relegated to uh, making vines and guts and it's perfect for that because it kind of comes out in tubes. I'm going to show you some of the stuff that I do with it. Some of the different things and maybe uh, maybe show some tips that uh, you guys hadn't known or hadn't considered before. I'm going to use four kinds first to show the differences. Uh, this is your normal great stuff, gaps and cracks. It's $3.98 a can, easily the best value. For $6.98 a can is great stuff fire block. This is the big gap filler. It's $4.96 a can. Uh, this is all from Home Depot, these prices, but they're pretty close from uh, the other places. So the big gap filler should expand more, and uh, we'll look at that. Window and door great stuff. This is a little more flexible, and I do like it for different purposes, but it's $6.48, so it's also very expensive per can compared to the other one. So let's uh, do them. Because I'm doing multiple experiments uh, with uh, the same cans of great stuff, I'm going to save it with duct tape. Putting it around the straw as tight as I can so that that seals it in and it won't cure on itself. So I am just going to leave this here. Uh, I'll come back and check it in about 20 minutes to see if these very thin lines are cured all the way. So all of it's been about 20 minutes, I think 25 or so, and just about all of my uh, great stuff is completely dry um, or completely cured. So I'm going to do another line. I'm going to show you guys a trick. So I'm going to get these unwrapped and squirt a line down next, right next to each one, and I'll show you guys a trick. I will be right back. So now for the trick. I put down another line just like that one. It's water. Get water in a spray bottle, and you're gonna mist. Put it on mist so you don't, if you mist, you'll uh, hurt your foam. If you stream, you could, you know, change the shape of your foam. You don't do that. So I'm going to miss. I'm missing that line I just sprayed with water. Okay. So now I'll let this sit for about five or six minutes and come right back. It has been about uh, seven minutes and the wet foam is pretty much completely cured. The only one that's not all the way cured is the fire block. And if you notice, the ones that I wetted are actually puffier. Uh, I'll actually change the view here so you guys can see that. This is the one that was sprayed with water, and it is much puffier and bigger than this one. This is the side that was sprayed with water. It's puffier and bigger than this side. The fire block, you get the least difference. So the additive in here doesn't make it puff out as much when you use water to help speed the cure. It's also the one that's not quite cured as much as the others. So it's also just more flexible in general. Um, 
This one's really puffy. This is the cheaper, great stuff. But let's look at a couple other properties of them. I will go with the unwetted first. Uh, I have down a garbage bag here, a contractor's bag, and that actually helps because it won't stick to it. You have a flat side, but you can do stuff, you know, all the time with this. And this is actually pretty darn flexible. So this is the window and door at 648 a can, but it is very flexible. It is not breaking and cracking and falling apart. All right, and that'll come in handy for something else that I want to do later, but kind of neat. And here is the, the watery one. Um, obviously, it is also just as flexible, uh, maybe even a little bit more so, but doesn't crack, doesn't break. Here is the big gap filler, the non-watered version. Um, pretty flexible, actually, when you peel it off. When we think of it as being, uh, you know, pretty brittle and it'll crack and break, the watered version, even more so. It's just a lot fluffier, so there's no real resistance. It's almost, it's almost like a rope. You know, it won't even hold itself up. Looks mildly inappropriate. Uh, fire block is here, also very flexible, um, very nice. Here is the moistened fire block, very flexible. Uh, this is much softer and I, I dare say limper than, uh, than the others. This is very rope-like, you know, kind of stretchy. All right. And regular grade stuff. This is where, you know, it's got some tension on it. It's not as flexible as the others. It's the least flexible, I would say. Let's try the wet version. Yeah, still a decent flex. Decent flex to it. But it is also uh, not quite as flexible as the others. The most flexible, I would say, is most less rigid is this fire block uh, that we use water on. Second is the window and door. Very flexible, very easy to use. This would make great guts, just kind of as is. If you're gonna put this in your haunted house or in your yard, uh, you should know what its flammability is like. I have a bucket of water right here that I'll drop my samples into. First, regular great stuff. I've broken off a piece. Three. All right, holding a torch on there for three seconds, it is pretty well burst into flames. Big gap filler. One, two, three. Sustains a flame three seconds. This is the window and door. Thousand one, thousand two, thousand three. Sustains a flame really well three seconds. So, is the fire block worth it? Let's try this one next. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. And it sustains a flame just fine. I'll try a, a shorter test with the fit, see if that makes any difference. Regular. Pass by, singed, not on fire. Fire block. Passed by, singed, not on fire. Big gap filler. Passed by, singed, not on fire. Window and door. Passed by, not on fire. That's one, that's two. 
hold the flame after two seconds. So, this doesn't seem to be any less flammable in this instance. Uh, I don't know which instance they mean for it to be less flammable, but at this point, I'm not terribly impressed with this. So, I'd say it's not worth spending twice as much on this product. Yeah.